Hello and welcome. As the title of the video suggests, I spent a little bit of time in the studio just playing around with color, texture, and shapes just to see what would happen. No goal in mind. And this print is what happened. So, let me walk you through the steps just to see how it all came together. After the initial all-over background color pull of yellow, I started ripping up some paper to get some different shapes that I could apply to the surface. Again, just to see what would happen. I decided the torn paper would become my horizon, and then I painted a separate sky color on top and um, landform color below it, and, and again, just to, to, to see what happened. I painted a green for the landform and then warmed it up with a bit of yellow, and I added some straight Titan green pale from the tube just to create the, um, the sky. The tape around the edges of the, uh, of the gel plate is only there to protect the wood from, from paint spotters, really, so I remove it before I pull the print. Just a reminder, the, uh, the paint transfers easily from the plate to the paper, so you only need gentle pressure on the paper in order to get that transfer to work. I added another piece of torn paper to the top of the landform and then added some more color just to create some new value changes in the, in the, the landform. I like this, but I wanted a little more texture to the ground, so I sprayed it with some water and then I waited a couple of seconds, put a shop towel over top to soak up the excess water, and this is what happened. Next, I created a stencil by tearing some oval-type shapes in my, um, in, my, in my torn paper. The, the two openings are going to serve as sort of a boulder, some rocks, some stones, whatever, in the, um, in the landform, just to break up that massive color that, that's in there. I added some paint, Titan Green Pale in this case. Um, uh, then I pulled the stencil off very carefully. And then I pulled the print. I then decided I wanted to add some visual texture to the, um, to the sky using a, a spattering technique. So I taped off the print actually this time and protected all the exposed areas of paper around the print. I loaded the red handle brush with some water and that purple color from the background, just tapped it against the other brush and built up layers and layers of spatter on the, on the, on the surface. Then I took, to shop, took a shop towel and I pressed it onto the spatters just to soften them a little bit, so, soak up the extra um, paint that's on the, on the surface. And here's the result. I'm still having trouble with the sky, I think, so I'm going back into it with some purple just to see what happens with that. I retaped the print itself, and then I started brushing vertically the, um, the, the, the purple down the sky so it looked a little bit like rain, perhaps. And then I used a dampen, a water dampen paper, um, a water dampen shop towel, rather, and just started softening that purple. Then I had a, a stamp I wanted to add to the rocks, so I taped off the, um, the edges of the rocks to prevent sort of overrun of the, of the color and, and stamped the, um, the horizontal lines of the rock just for some visual texture again. Next, I outlined some trees with uh, an HB pencil and then filled in the, um, the, the lines of the trees with my trusty pit pens. Um, I use a fine liner, a, an S, I think it is, on the, on, on the pit pens. Just random lines, rough shapes, curly cues in the middle. That's all it takes just to fill it in and create some interesting visual effects in the trees. Then I just took a brush, a little bit of water on the brush, a little bit of purple paint, added it to the, um, to the edge of the trees just to get some... some um, color in the trees and to make the trees pop out into the foreground. And we are done. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below if you like and follow me on Instagram if you like. <laughs>